which today is entitled Warrior, Identify Your Enemy. This is basic combat training for the Christian this morning. Spiritual warfare. We're addressing spiritual warfare because we live in violent times. There's so much violence in the kingdom of God, so much fear, pain, anguish, affliction, <coughs> stress, anxiety. It's all throughout the kingdom of God. It's all throughout his church. And the kingdom is suffering. And the church is suffering. You know, this morning around 2.30, we had to put Ginger back into the hospital. There's just so many demonic spirits in this world that are attacking us, causing pain and illness and anxiety and fear and stress. And what are we as Christians doing about it? What can we do about it? Because as warriors of God, we are involved in spiritual warfare, whether you like it or not, whether you're prepared for it or not. You know this. Okay. It's not working. <laughs> it's me. It's me. I'm sorry. It's working now. We need to put on the whole armor of God. Every single day, shouldn't even get out of bed without putting our armor on. Every waking moment, we should have the helmet of salvation. Thank the Lord that we have the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith, and our feet. You know, you can't be a warrior without covering your feet. We need to shot our feet for carrying forth the peace and the good news of Jesus Christ. That's how we raise the dead. And we need to come violently against our adversary. We need to come violently against all of the adversaries of the devil coming against the kingdom of God. So as Christians, we need to be aware of what's going on around us. You know, what's happening around us? What's going on in our minds? The biggest battleground sometimes is just your mind. You know, what is keeping us from our destiny? What's keeping us from our purpose? Where did my trigger go? Oh. <laughs> what's keeping us from our, our destiny and our purpose? And what's keeping us from all the things that God has for us? You know, what's going on in the church? What is the devil trying to do in our church? How is he affecting the members of the church? How is the devil coming against the church? How is the devil coming against this church? Is the devil attempting to divide us? Mark talked about that this past week. Divide and conquer. What's the devil doing in this church to divide the members, not only from one another, but to divide them from their leaders? What is the devil doing to keep us from our calling that the Lord has put upon our lives? 
What is the devil doing to keep us from sharing in his love? We just took communion. That was sharing in his love. You know, a couple of weeks ago, Pastor Nikki gave a message and she showed a video clip from the American sniper. And in that video clip, it was sitting around at a dinner table and, and the father was talking to his sons and he was basically saying that, you know, the world is made up of wolves and sheep dogs and sheep. You know, which one are you? We can't all be sheep dogs. We're not all warriors. But we are all in a war. A few months back, in one of the evening messages, I gave a message detailing one of Rick Joyner's prophetic words. A prophetic word that he had given in 2006. And it was a word about the rising up of warriors within the church and how that was going to affect the entire world and this nation and the church. And it was gonna occur as we got closer and closer to those last days. And it's happening now. In those last days, there's gonna be a remnant of Christian warriors rising up to take on the Antichrist going to be our sheep dogs. We know this verse. Ephesians 6, 12. It says, For we are wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of the darkness of this age, and against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. It's, it's not a, against other people. It's against the demons that have taken hold of their minds, and their behaviors. This past Thursday, Mark came by, he visited Ginger. And later that evening, Ginger says, there's still a wicked presence in this house. There's a spirit in this house that's bringing me down. It's making me not get any better. We haven't gotten rid of it. We need to pray. So we, we prayed. The Lord says we can cast out demons. And we believe it. Amen. So we spent time to cast out whatever that demon was and any of his little friends that were hanging around with him, we cast them all out that night. Because the devil can really get to you and make you afraid. Make you afraid to do all that you've been called to do. Fear. Fear is the number one enemy that we face as Christians. Fear. It controls our minds. It controls our behaviors. It controls our actions. Fear. It's the number one thing that's keeping us from fulfilling all that God has called us to do. Separating us from his, his blessings that he wants to share with us. Preventing us from being enriched as heirs of his promises. Fear. It keeps us from being everything that we are called to be in Christ. Who we are in Christ. Fear keeps us from being all that we can be in Christ. Fear. Fear is a liar. Oops, went wrong way. Isaiah 41 to 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Now, if you know that God is with you, what in the world are you afraid of? <laughs> Be 
Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I've been weak. I've been needing his strength lately. I will help you. He's helped me a lot lately. And I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I know how important right hands are. Psalms 23, 4. We all know Psalms 23. It says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, no matter what you're going through, if you think this is the worst day of your life, just know that you don't have to fear anything because the Lord is with you. His rod and his staff, they should comfort you. I would never, ever want to be whacked on top of the head with the Lord's rod or his staff. You're not going to be around any longer. But as warriors in Christ, we have to resist fear. Warriors do not cower. Warriors know that when they come into the presence of fear, they have got to kill it before it kills us. It's a mindset. You know, I was reading a story about a former sniper. And he shared about how he was sent ahead of his troops and he would find a place that he would hide and it was Concealed, and nobody would know he was there and he wasn't visible. It's just him and God waiting for whatever his target was going to be, waiting for the enemy. And he would wait, and he would wait, and he would wait, ready to take out that enemy as soon as he saw that enemy. And he would take the enemy out one by one. Now, the person that was interviewing him asked him, he said, weren't you afraid of dying while you sat there all alone? And the enemy was coming. And he replied, no, I died when I left home. Because if fear had gotten a hold of me, I wouldn't have survived everything that I went through. You know, as warriors of Christ, we can't have any fear in our lives. We need to die daily to self. We've got to die to self and not let fear get a hold of our lives and change our minds and change our thoughts and change our behaviors and what we're doing and the kingdom causes that we were meant to fulfill that day. First Peter, verse 4, 1 through 2 says, Since Christ has suffered in the flesh, Peter says, Arm yourselves also with the same purpose, which is to come against sin, come against evil, come against fear, come against anguish, come against stress, come against anxiety, come against affliction, Come against demonic spirits. You need to come against the attacks of the devil. You need to arm yourself. You need to take every one of those pieces that make up the armor of God and cloak yourself. They're all needed. Because if you're not... If you're not wearing part of that armor, the devil's going to come against the weakest part that you have. Maybe you don't understand the word of God. The devil will destroy you if you do not know that word. You could have, you could have the belt and the, and the helmet and everything else, but if you don't know the word of God, he's going to attack you and he's going to kill you. We've got to use all of our spiritual weapons and we've got to take it out. 
No playing around here. We've got to have a counterattack against everything that's coming against us. You need to be able to make a clean shot and take it out. You've got to be ready. But how do you know when to shoot? How do you know that it's really fear? Maybe it's just something that God is doing in your life. Maybe it's a lack of knowledge. You just don't have the knowledge of what's going on. How do we know it's fear? If we're going to take something out, how do we know what it is? We need to be able to identify our enemy. Now, if you watch police shows, everybody here like watching those police dramas on TV. A lot of the police shows, they have these profilers in the shows. The profiler is someone that they've studied the enemy, they know its characteristics, its behaviors, its mannerisms, how it does, what it moves. They know their adversaries. And because they know the adversary, they know where to find them, they know how to come against them, they know how to bind them, they know how to subdue them, conquer them, kill them if they have to. So what is fear? What is the profile of fear? So that you know when you come against fear, it's fear. It's not something that God's doing in your life. It's not something that you're just lacking knowledge. It's fear. It's the devil. He's out to kill you. You want to be able to put up a good fight. You need to be able to guard your mind. You need to be able to guard your life. You need to be able to guard your family's life. You need to be able to guard your ministry. You need to be able to guard your church, your business. You've got to be prepared. Cloaked in the armor of God. So what is a warrior looking to take down? You know, what strongholds are in his way that he's got to take down that's preventing him from doing all that God's called him to do. Well, first of all is your fears. You need to be able to take down your fears because the fears are the enemies of your thoughts. It's the lies that say you can't do something. It's the lies that say you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. It's the habits that keep you undisciplined and un, or disobedient from what God is calling you to do. It's because the enemy is anything that keeps you from advancing in the kingdom of God. Anything. Anything. It could be a cup of coffee. It could be that Hardy's biscuit you had this morning. It can be anything. Anything that you love, anything that you cherish, the devil can use that against you. You've got to be able to identify when it's the enemy and when it's not the enemy. Because there are enemies of your soul, there's enemies of your mind, there's enemies that are warring against you and it's against your spirit, trying to take your spirit down. Enemies trying to take away dominion. This is dominion that God has given you. This is Holy Spirit paid in full, Christ inspired dominion. The devil's going to try to take that away from you. So how do we guard our minds against fear? Well, I guess I don't have this one. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 it says, Throwing down imaginations and every high thing that is exalted against the knowledge of God. Anything that you put before God, you've got to throw it down. You've got to take it out. And bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. 
You know, God says, do not fear. God says he didn't give us a spirit of fear. And this scripture says to take the self-defeating thoughts the enemy has planted in your mind and take them captive. Don't let them control you. You control what's in your mind. You control your thoughts. Don't let them run rampant up there. That's not cheap real estate you've got up there. You know, take advantage of that real estate and use it to your advantage. So instead you take fearful thoughts prisoner. You know, these thoughts that are confounding you and confusing you and just making you disobedient. You need to take them prisoner. And you do that by knowing the word of God. God's word says the Lord has already been where you are going. Have you ever thought about that? What you're going to do this afternoon, the Lord has already been there ahead of you. Mm -hmm. If you've got some things coming up this week that you're regretting, you're not looking forward to, the Lord is already there making a way for you. Because the Lord is omnipresent. That means that the Lord can be in two places at once. He can be eight days down the road and standing right beside you right now. The Lord is there to strengthen you. You're not alone. He's there to give you the wisdom. You know, if you don't know what to do or how to do it or how to avoid this situation or how to get out of this situation, the Lord does. He's got a door waiting for you. So anything that's in disagreement with the Word of God, it's got to be taken out. You've got to kill it. You've got to destroy it. You've got to wipe it out. You've got to obliterate, obliterate it. Is that right? Am I saying that right? Uh -huh. Speaking too quickly. You've got to destroy it. It's encouraging. I missed another one. It's encouraging to know Exodus 14, 14 says, The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Okay, so why am I being so extreme today? Why am I so extreme in what I'm sharing with you this morning? You know, can't you just deal with your fears? No. You can't. Because they want to kill you. They want to destroy you. You've got to put an end to your fears before they destroy you, before they steal from you. They could steal a day away from you. They could steal a year away from you. They could steal a relationship away from you. They could steal your job. They could steal a blessing. The devil came to kill, to kill steal, and destroy. He didn't come to deal with us. He didn't come to negotiate with us. He didn't come to bargain with us. He came to kill us. He doesn't like us because God loves us. And anything that God loves, the devil is going to kill it, destroy it any way that he can. And he's not going to stop trying until you take your very last breath. Then he'll give up on you. Hopefully you've been prepared for that last breath. So why am I extreme? Because the enemy is extreme. We've got to be more extreme than the enemy. He will do anything that he can to destroy you. And he doesn't follow the rules. He lies. He's deceit, deceptive. He cheats. Provides delusions. 
He'll turn things that you love and things that you cherish against you. Or he'll steal them from you. You've got to kill him. The Bible says that we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. That means at the very beginning of time, God had a wonderful plan for us. But because of Adam's sin, we were born into a world of sin. We've got to live in that sin now. And living in sin opens the door to the devil to do things in your life, to bring fear, to bring stress, to bring anxiety, to bring affliction, to kill you. Hey, Ray. You know, you talk about the door. Mm -hmm. Can I just yeah. elaborate on that for just a quick second? Dr. Youssef talks about our, our, our hearts are like this building with, with myriad doors, and, and they all need to be locked, dead bolted, shut tight, because the enemy will walk around and he will push on them. Amen. Push on him. So he finds he one open. Finds one that's open. Bam! He's in there. He's not like Jesus. Jesus comes to the door of your heart and knocks and waits for you to open it because that's what kind of a God he is. You know, and, the enemy is deceived. And the door doesn't have to open all the way. It just has to have a tiny little crack. Yep. And, and then he's slither, in. Slither, slither in. And he's in. Yeah, slither in. <laughs> because the devil wants to convince you that you're not kings. That you're not heirs to the promises that God has made to his children. It's a lie. We've got to rise up as warriors. It's time for kingdom snipers. It's time for kingdom SEAL teams. We call them SEAL teams now after Dalton's message last week. We're all sealed. We're not SEAL teams. We're SEAL teams. So we've got to be serious about our business with God. So how do we know that it's fear? What's that profile that we were talking about? Well, fear is false evidence that appears real. It's the opposite of faith. Faith is things that you hope for, but maybe the evidence isn't there yet. It comes through your faith things that are not seen. So when we have fear in our lives, when we're facing fear, it's deceitful evidence. It's not the truth. And it's right in your face. So you'll see the deceitful evidence. And it's trying to convince you that, hey, this is real, but it's not real. But in faith, we have an evidence that we cannot see. But it's the truth. And as our faith grows stronger and stronger and stronger, that evidence begins to manifest itself and it becomes real. And that's the battleground that we're facing. That's the battleground that we as warriors in the kingdom are on. The battleground of fear and faith. So as warriors, we've got to examine the evidence. What are we coming against here? Either the evidence is false, but it's in your face, or the evidence is real. If it's false, we've got to shoot, we've got to take it out. But if it's real, we've got to embrace it because it's from God. If it's fear, it's causing us to see it now, right now. We feel the anxiety. We have stress. We have worry. We're afraid. Maybe you have doubt. Maybe you're second-guessing what God is doing. Maybe you have second-guessing, is there a God? What are you feeling? If you're feeling these things, take it out. Take it out. Just like David took Goliath out. 
He, he wasn't scared. He just stood his ground. And he had the faith that he could take that monster out. Shoot it. Because it's false evidence and it appears real, but it's not real. It's a lie of the devil. If it has expectation, maybe we can't see it, but we have anticipation and it's something that's moving forward. It's faith. We want to embrace faith. We don't want to shoot faith. Some of us Christians, we like to shoot things that are God, that God's giving us. We don't recognize what God is doing and the blessings that he's given us. If it has stagnation, if, it's, if there's intrepidation, if it's shaky, if it's scary, it's fear. Shoot it. Take it out. Use the full armor of God. You've got the weapons you need to take it out. Step over it, move past it, and keep moving forward. What is God's plan for you? You also have to critique the content when you're coming against fear and faith. Fear has a certain content. We learned this in 1 Timothy 3.17. It says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and sound mind. So for critiquing something, when we examine it, when we look at its profile, if there's no love, it's fear. If it has no soundness, if it doesn't make sense, if it's just confusion, there's fear here. If it has no purity, if there is no forward movement, if it's taking you backwards instead of forward, it's taking you away instead of toward what God is calling you to do, it's fear. Take it out. So we've got to examine the evidence that we're coming against. We've got to look at the content. If it's fake, if it's a lie, if it's unseen, but if it's unseen evidence, If it's unseen evidence, then we know that whatever it is, is going to manifest itself if we have the faith and we have the belief and we have the trust in God. We know that it will be everything that God has called it to be. But if it has no power, if it has no soundness, if it has no love, this is the enemy. The enemy's trying to do something in your life. The enemy's doing something in your mind. Take it out. Finally, there we go. If it has torment, have you ever experienced real torment? I mean, you're shivering and shaking. You don't know what to do, which way to go. It, it's fear. The Bible says that fear has torment, but perfect love casts out fear. God's love casts out fear. If it terrorizes you, if it makes you turn around, if it makes you back up, if it makes you afraid to go forward, if it makes you second guess what God is doing here, if it makes you want to cower, if it makes you want to hide, if it makes you want to withdraw, if it makes you want to take yourself out of a situation that's, that could be a real blessing, it's fear. Because it causes you to lose your confidence. It causes you to be doubtful. It causes you to second guess God. Is this God or is this something else? God wouldn't do this. God doesn't love me. If it expands your horizons, it's faith. If it allows you to explore all your possibilities, that's faith. That's God. God's got something big planned for you. Embrace it. 
sure. I'm not afraid. I know. <laughs> I'm just sitting here listening, and you know, I mean, the only reason the devil is attacking us as a church or this body is because we're getting ready for something bigger. We're already doing it. We're right. Yeah. And so, you know, it's a compliment. It's a compliment that the devil's on the run. Yeah. I, you know what? I hate the devil. Amen. Amen. That's the attitude. I hate him. The devil doesn't like you. Why should you like him? That's it. Yeah. Nikki, what did I just tell you? He gave us Last armor for the me. front. We're supposed to go forward. It's he right. didn't put nothing for us. We're not supposed to back up. Nope, no He's back. got our back. No I'm sorry. I'm just... He's got our back. And this is how we do it. We spend time. Lord of God, brother. There, this is where it starts. You spend time with him, he'll speak to you. Amen. Amen. And he'll give you. You might not know every scripture. I don't. But the ones you need will come to you. He will, he will give them to you when you need them. You read his peace. That's right. <laughs> so, Thank you. some of us are sheep. Some of us are sheep dogs. Some of us are warriors. If you're a warrior, you're on the front line. If you're a warrior and you're on the front line, you're the one that makes the decision that you've got to make. Do you shoot or do you embrace it? Is it of the devil or is this of God? If it's coming out of darkness, if it's coming out of evil forces, if it's coming to harm you, not faith, but fear. Take it out. So as a warrior, you've got to examine the evidence. You've got to look at the profile. You've got to look at the content. Is it causing you to go backwards? Away from things? Or is it causing you to move forward? And be blessed. You have the power and the authority to take it down. Jesus said, cast out demons. He didn't say ignore them, leave them alone, they're not going to bother you, they don't bother you, don't bother them. They're manipulating and conniving and they're finding a way to get through that sliver of a crack that little weakness that they can find in your life to destroy you. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. You know, many, many of our brothers and our sisters in Christ, they're being elevated to warrior status right now. And it's for your protection. They're the sheepdogs. They're going to protect you. They're on the front lines. That's where it's the most dangerous on the front lines. A lot of times it's just them and God and the enemy. <laughs> That's all you need. <coughs> don't concern yourselves about their anointing. You know, don't be envious of their promotion. They have your back and your friend. Do not allow the enemy to be envious or jealous of their position. Because envy and jealousy within the church results in friendly fire. You've heard of friendly fire. We come against friendly fire in this church. There's friendly fire in this church. We don't fall for the lies and the deceit because it's intending to split up the church. <coughs> it's intended to split up your relationship with God. 
Proverbs 6.19 says, A false witness that uttereth lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. We've been talking about divisions and disagreements in the church. We were talking about the church, but disagreements in this church. And the way the devil goes about to divide and to conquer God's people. It's warfare. It's a tactic of warfare. The Lord wants peace among his people. He wants peace in his church. He wants unity in his church. He wants us to dwell together as brothers and sisters, as family. In Romans 16, 17, it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them that are causing divisions and occasions of stumbling contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and turn away from them. The vision in the church. The devil is going to come against you any way he can. He's looking for a crack in this church and in all, in the church in general. He's looking for a sliver in your faith. Mark them that are causing divisions and occasions of stumbling contrary to the doctrine which he learned and turn away from them. So this is how you deal with someone that won't repent and continues to be a pawn for the devil. These people turn people against other people within the church. If they don't repent and they change their ways, you've got to take them out. To turn away from them. The next verse, Romans 16, 18 says, For they are such, serve not our Lord Christ but their own belly, which means their flesh. They're serving their flesh. And by their smooth and fair speech, they beguile the hearts of the innocent. You've got to be able to identify the enemy. You've got to know their tactics. Their smooth speech. Because the devil will use people within the church to attack its leadership. That's one way that he can divide and conquer his church. But in Hebrews 13, verse 17, it tells us, it says, Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit to them. For they watch in behalf of your souls as they that shall give an account that they may do this with joy and not with grief for this were unprofitable to you. Now this doesn't just apply to the leadership of the church but this applies to your relationship with every one of God's children. We should not speak poorly of our brother's and our sisters in Christ. And the Lord is warning us that when someone is coming against his bride, if you're coming against his church, God is going to take them out. So don't be a fool for the devil. Don't be a tormentor. Don't be a gossiper. Don't be a slanderer. Don't be a Jezebel. We've got these things from time to time in this church, in all churches. And it can divide the church. You've got to watch it. You've got to identify it. You've got to know it when you come in contact with it. Yeah. Romans 1, verse 29 through 30 says, Being filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malignity, worship, whispers, backbiters, hateful to God. We've got to identify when people like this are trying to 
cause a division within the church. And God is calling his warriors to rise. He's building up an army of Davids right now. We talked about David earlier. David was a shepherd boy. Spent most of his early life hidden in the hillsides of Judea. Hidden. Snipers and warriors are usually well hidden. And they wait for their adversary. He was hidden until Goliath came. And as all of Saul's army cowered and as they hid, David stepped forward to be God's warrior. And with a slingshot and a rock, he took him out. But he had faith. He professed his faith to the Philistine army that you do not come against God's children. God will take you out. I'm just a little guy here, but my rock is in God's hand and he's going to put it right where it needs to be. He's going to take out that giant today. Well, we also know that David was a warrior in the area of worship. That's an area that we use for warfare in this church all the time, worship. David wrote the Psalms, and the Psalms even to this day pierce the darkness of the devil and gives you hope and an encouragement. And the Lord is releasing many warriors today with this anointing of music. An anointing to write songs, an anointing to write books, and to write plays, and produce movies to help pierce the darkness of the evil in the world today. God's doing a mighty thing in these later days. And when you consider all the wars that rage against the church and God's people today, the greatest weapon that we have in the midst of all the chaos, chaos that we're encountering every single day, all the strife, all the worry, all the stress, is worship. And to fall down on our knees in God's presence and pray. Because when we fall down on our knees, that's when we get closest to heaven. Jesus lives in you. He's not afraid. Why are you afraid? Jesus has all power and authority over the sea, over the air, over the land, over your mind. He commands the seal teams. Praise the Lord. His power, His authority has been entrusted to you. He has given it to you to go out and heal the sick, raise the dead, and cast out demons. Now raising the dead isn't like Lazarus encounters all the time. Raising the dead, there's 90% of the world is walking dead people right now. We've got to raise the dead and get them to know the good news of Jesus. Jesus Christ. That's part of being a warrior. And you have nothing to fear. Even death itself, because when you left home, you had already died. So, my message today is warriors arise and stand tall. Because the Bible says that if you resist the enemy, the devil will flee from you. The word of God is the power that overcomes the devil. And as we command demons to go, they go. So we need to take up the shield of faith with which you can ex extinguish all the flaming darts and arrows that are coming at you. I know I've got a bunch coming at me. I got the 
shield of faith right here with me right now. You've got to resist the devil. You've got to stand firm in your faith. But faith in what? The word of God. The promises of God. If you know the truth, you know the word of God. The other day I had a dream. I just want to close by sharing my dream. A lot of things have been going on in my life, which includes this church, includes my wife, includes my son. A lot of turmoil, a lot of, a lot of attacks, spiritual attacks, full force. A lot of things going on in the church that not too many people know about. So all I'm going to ask you right now, what is the church? What is the church? Tell me. It's us. It's all of us. You're Christ. the church. Amen. Christ in us. Christ in you. So when I look out right here, I see the River Room Church. Amen. You are the church. Now, what is the mission of the church? Bring people to Christ. Find the lepers, <laughs> heal the sick, raise the dead, preach the gospel. Go out and apprehend them to come in. So if that's the mission of the church, whose mission is that? Ours. Right. God has, is raising an army of Davids right now. We've got to come against the devil because his time is short. And he's not only roaring like a lion, but he's ready to rip up anything that's of God in his life. An army. You look, an army is made up of two or more corps. An army is like 100,000 men, 150,000 men. And women. Men, I mean men and women. The Bible says that Jesus is the commander of angel armies. That's just an army. He says he commands angel armies. Well, he's also got an army here on earth, and we're in that army. So it's two corps. Now, a corp is made up of two or more divisions. A division is like 25,000 to 50,000 men or women making up the corp. A division is two or more battalions. You can see the sizes keep getting smaller. 10,000 to 15,000 men or women make up a battalion. And a number of battalions make up the corps. Four or more companies make up a battalion. So a battalion is about 400, I mean, companies like four or 100 to 1,000 men or women. So it takes a bunch of companies to make up a battalion. And two or more platoons make up a company. 100 to 250 men or women. And a platoon is made up of squads. A squad is like 16 to 50 men or women. Squads are made up of sections, which are like 8 to 20 people. So, so if you were to look at the river room, and we're part of God's army, where does the river room fall as part of God's army? squad. We're a SEAL team. We're a small unit of people. There's only like 15 to 30 of us. Well, like 15 to 30, but we can get up to 50 and still be a squad. One of these days we're going to be a company, a platoon. Yeah. Platoon river room. <laughs> but right now, 
We're a squad. Do you think God puts the same calling upon a squad that he does a corp or a division? Yeah. The division's got like 10,000, 50,000 people. They're expected to do a whole lot more than a squad is expected to do. They cover bigger territories. A division is made up of probably a hundred squads. So they're able to go in different directions and cover greater ground and do more things for the kingdom. But when you're a squad, you kind of have to be kind of more narrow in your focus and in your mission statements. You know, like when uh, SEAL Team 6 took Ben Laden down, it was what, about 8 to 12 men? It took all 8 to 12 men to do that. They all had to work together. They all had to have the same mission, the same purpose, the same mindset. They worked as a team. You didn't have two of the team members in Syria that day. You didn't have two others in Lebanon. You didn't have two other SEAL team members in Africa that day. They were on the same mission. They weren't on different purposes, different missions, trying to accomplish different things. They were working as a team. So that's what we've got to do here at the River Room. We have to work as a team. All of you, you're either on the team or you're AWOL. <laughs> Missing in action. We need to get our team together here. We've got a lot that we want to work on as a team. Ishikar group is just one. I mean, we are small, but we have a lot of things that we're trying to do. That's why the devil is after us trying to divide us up because we don't act like a squad. We act like a division. I mean, we're out there kicking double butt. So that was, the, that was the dream that we just need to work together and we need to be a team. We're SEAL Team River Room Church. We need to act like a team. Come together like a team. Be united like a team. Support one another like a team. Be there for one another team. You know, they never leave somebody behind. They're always got your back. They're going to take you through the sh valley of the shadow of death. The Lord is going to be there with you. And your team is going to be there with you. Got it from both sides. Can I say one thing? Praise God, amen. I, say all you want. I, I, I wrestle with a lot of different things in life. I long to be more Christ-like. We all do. And as we yield to Him, we become more Christ-like. Um, I have a lot of armament of my own. And I thought, I, I think so often about the armament. I, I, I'm afraid to... I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to shoot Bambi when I go out to the to the woods or whatever. Um, but I have a lot of armament of my own. And but the biggest armament I have doesn't that doesn't uh, uh, have a ballistic effect. Uh, it, it it has a spiritual effect if I use the armament that I have. The word of God. If you live by the sword, you die by the sword. We're talking the physical sword now. I'm talking the spiritual sword. Is our our weapons aren't carnal? Shoot them up, bang, bang! But they're mighty to the tearing down of strongholds. They're spiritual. We gotta talk the talk. We gotta walk the walk. And if we talk the talk, God can rain fire down from heaven like He did back in the day. Amen. God can say to that. That one that's getting ready to go execute this one or shoot that one or whatever. Hey, no way. No way, Jose. I see what you're doing, devil. Get behind me. you got to move in another direction. That's God's man. Amen. 
That's God's people. We're God's people. And no weapon formed against us will prosper. A physical weapon, not. God's weapons of armament are spiritual. And they're mighty. And they overcome all. The church world has to stand up now. I had a, I shared the story before about a missionary was being robbed in Ethiopia, somewhere over in the foreign, foreign countries and all. And the missionary was walking in faith. Pure faith. And the, the guy was getting ready to shoot him. The bullet came out of the gun. The bullet dropped to the ground. The assailant ran off. That's God's faith. That's right. You're sealed with the faith of God in Amen. Christ. You're sealed. Nothing can harm you. You're immovable as long as you abound in the work of the ministry and the love of Christ. But I will say this. Church world, form your weapons. Get them together. Talk to talk. Walk to walk. If you see something going down that ain't right, if you see somebody pulling a gun on somebody else, speak the Word of God. Amen. Speak it. Because I'm telling you, it has power over the physical. I'm afraid to go. i got all these nice little guns of mine. I'm afraid to go out and shoot them. <laughs> I got them. They're nice. Wow. But you know what? I like to shoot God's gun. Yeah, because it destroys, it tears down. Come on. And, but what it did, once it destroys, it rebuilds, it recreates something new, something pure, something beautiful. You shoot, you shoot an enemy with a holy gun, and it's going to change their life. Amen. It's going to change their life if they receive it. Because let me tell you, the Word of God is sharper than any, any two-edged sword. It divides bone from marrow. It divides truth from a lie. And the truth sets men free on this planet. Amen. And it's God's Word. Speak the Word of the Lord. The demons will flee. Speak the Word of the Lord. The, the criminals will turn and run <coughs> away from God or run to God, but guess what? They won't shoot you. Amen. Speak the word of the Lord. We gotta talk to talk. We gotta walk to walk. And we gotta be consistent in our endeavors to be children of the most high God. To be in the army of the most high God. Amen. To be in the saints that go marching in because of what the word of the Lord says and what the word of the Lord does for us and who He makes us. He transforming us into His image. And all we got to do, there's not a greater weapon. All the nuclear weapons in the war aren't greater than the Word of God. Amen. Because it's strong. It's powerful. It will stand the end of time. It will stand the test of time. And we're placed here to speak it. Amen. Call things that aren't as though they already are. Amen. You're born again. You don't know it, but you're born again. You don't know it, but Jesus loves you, and He don't want you to be the way you are. He doesn't want none of us to be the way that we are. He wants us to be transformed in the way that He is because we were in Him before the beginning of time, and He wants us to be just like Him mm -hmm. so we can enter into His vast, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> in infinite wisdom and counsel. God's fear is a reverence to Him. When you reverence God, you, you empower the forces of the angels in, uh, in, uh, to fight for you. You don't have to draw a war. You don't have to draw a physical sword because a spiritual sword's already in place. Gideon surrounded him with 300 men. Started out with great numbers. He surrounded him with 300 men. The Midianites. What happened? What happened? They blew the horns. They crashed the jars. They saw the lights all the way around the Midianite camp. And what happened? The sword of the Spirit moved in. And they destroyed themselves from within. And Gideon and his army never had to draw the first sword. Amen. They had the tactic. Man. That's right. But you know what? They were God tactics. They were God tactics. 
I'm making a new word today. God they were God actors. And listen, as people of faith, rise up, man of faith, woman of faith, and go forth into the ministry. The devil don't want us to do it, but God commands us to do it. And let's do it. Fight the good fight of faith. And you know what? I'm telling you something right now. When I come here, y'all, this spirit man gets so filled up Amen. that I just got to proclaim it. Amen. And I don't just proclaim it here. I, where, where, well, you're so filled up where are all the people at? They're out there. They're coming. But we got to be ready when they come because they're going to come with battle scars. They're going to come with things that we've not seen yet. And we're in a preparational period right now for the Spirit of the Lord to work in us. So when they do come, we'll be ready. If they come and we're not ready, where are we at? They're going back out there and they're going to go back out in the, in, in, the, in the desert and they're going to wander for 40 more years. Jesus ain't going to tarry for 40 more years. No. He's we'll not. we got to be ready. Speak the word. It will not come back void and it will transform darkness into light. Dead people into people made alive. That's what He does. He takes the bad and makes good. He takes the good and makes the better. He takes the better and makes the righteous sons of God, the royalty of the kingdom of heaven, whom we are part partners of in Christ Jesus. Amen. I love every one of you. And everybody start claiming that. Now. Claim it. You tell the sickness that's bothering you, get off of me. You tell the back pain that's bothering get off of me. This ain't from God. You rise up in faith. Faith heals. Faith conquers. Faith in the, the world? No, faith in Christ alone. The blood is applied to the doorpost of your heart every day when you get up and step your feet on the floor and say, as for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to walk with Jesus today. I, and he, and you know what? When you make that decision, right off the bat, oops, he's walking he's with Italian. you. He's <laughs> Italian. Yeah, he's walking. He's walking with you. Amen. I love you, and I'm going to fight this good fight of faith. Amen. And together, we will go forth and conquer, not by the physical, but by the spiritual. Not by our might. Not by our power, but by the power of the Lord. Amen. Thus saith the Lord. Not by might, it's not by power, but by the Spirit. Let me get it straight, says the Lord. Amen. 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 Yeah. Well, this, this was basic combat training today. Okay. And if you've ever been through basic combat training, one of the first things they tried to teach you is marksmanship. You've got to be able to hit the target. You've got to be able to see the target, identify the target, and take it out. That's what we are learning today. Now, the River Room Church is more than a boot camp because we give you advanced training because we're here to prepare you and equip you for everything that you need to do in ministry as part of God's SEAL team. So a lot of things that we do are not just basic, but a little bit more advanced, and we're trying to get everyone here you know, fully equipped, fully armored, so that when you step outside, you don't get hurt. Right. You know, any, any combat team, you know, they got a sergeant or someone that's leading them. Now, he's going to ask you to do a lot of things that you're not comfortable with doing, but he's not going to ask you to do nothing that he is not sure that you're going to be protected if